Well, hello, friends, and welcome to online worship at Ferndale Free Methodist Church. My name is Scott Gentry. I'm the senior pastor here, and it's a real joy and privilege to welcome you to our service today. It's a special day. It's Mother's Day, and so we do want to extend a special greeting uh, to all the moms that are with us in particular today. We want to celebrate you throughout the whole service. And my prayer is even in this day, as different as it is, that this day will be an extra special blessing to you. As we all begin to prepare our hearts to worship, I want to share two verses of scripture with you that will lead us into our time and especially lead us into a time to be able to express some of our own praise back to God. The first comes from Psalm 50, verse 10. The psalmist wrote these words, praise him for his powerful acts, redeeming his people, praise him for his greatness that surpasses our time and our understanding. So God's worthy of our praise and especially in that context, the things that he knows with what we're going through now, when it's all going to end, God knows all of that. So for all of those reasons, he's worthy of our praise. And then the second verse I would read and share with you today is from Psalm 40 verse 17, it says this, meanwhile, I am empty and I need so much, but I know the Lord is thinking of me. You are my help. Only you can save me. My true God, please hurry. Boy, this really captures where we are today, right? With all that we're going through, with still some of the uncertainties we're facing. But with that confidence, uh, let's offer God our praise as we begin this very first song of worship today, Lord, I need you.
Well, it is Mother's Day today, but what a different day it is. Uh, we're going to be honoring and celebrating our mothers throughout the entire service. And to kind of kick it off and to lead into that, I want you to watch this very first little video clip. Uh, it's just called uh, A Very Different Mother's Day. Good morning. My name is Sherry and I'm part of our guest services team here at Ferndale Free Methodist Church. Whether you're joining us from near or far, welcome to Sunday morning worship. If you're joining us for the very first time online and you fill out a digital connection card today, we will donate to a charity of your choice. You know, that's just a beautiful way for us to get to know you and for you to give back. I just wanna to say to all you moms out there, happy Mother's Day. You know, although my mom has gone home to be with the Lord, I cherish so many beautiful memories about her. She was a very humble, wise woman with a very beautiful heart. You know, during quarantine, I've been spending some time organizing and I ran across this baking spoon that belonged to my mom. It's very special to me because we had many laughs over it while she was alive and it brought many tears and many life lessons after she was gone. I used to tease her about it all the time and I would say, Mom, get a new spoon. This one is all stained and it's got a lot of cracks on it. And the bottom piece is broken. And she would say, oh, Sherry, I don't need a new spoon. I could get a new spoon. It would be white and perfect. And, um, but it wouldn't serve a better purpose. Over the years, that has taught me so many beautiful lessons. Sometimes, as moms, we feel a little worn, a little tired, a little imperfect and sometimes we don't think we are measuring up but here's the thing God hasn't called us to be perfect God has called us into a ministry of motherhood to be used for his purpose and his glory and if we lean on him during the times when we feel a little tired a little worn a little broken and a little less perfect he will fill in all those places so moms today may you celebrate all the beautiful things that motherhood has brought you. Happy Mother's Day. Have a beautiful and blessed day. Hello, my name is Laura. I am the children's pastor here at Ferndale Free Methodist Church. Happy Mother's Day. Today, we are celebrating mothers. We are celebrating women as a whole, whether you are a mom or not. We are celebrating you. Today is for you. And we are so excited that you have joined us. And I have another object lesson for the kids. But like I always say, just because it's for the kids doesn't mean it's only for the kids. We can all learn something from this. So kids, if you remember that last summer, I believe, I don't know, time blurs together. We learned about the Ten Commandments. And one of the Ten Commandments is honor your father and mother. It's commandment number five, because we learned the action steps that go with all the Ten Commandments. And number five is to honor your father and mother, and you can give them a high five. So I want you to turn to your mom or grandma or whomever and give her a high five and say, you're awesome. Yes, just like that. 
But I also have another little object lesson for us, and it's got this purse involved, and there's some items inside of it that describe moms. So let's see what's in the bag. First off, we have some tissues because moms pray for us. Moms who love Jesus, they pray for us, and they may shed some tears, and so they need something to, to wipe their tears. They shed tears because they're grateful for their kids. They share tears, shed tears because they're sad about things that are happening in this world, but they pray, and then they need the Kleenex to wipe their tears in the plastic and everything. Then I have a chocolate bar, mmm, because moms are sweet and they speak encouraging words and they love us and they're just so great. Just like chocolate is just so great. Mmm, good stuff. Then I have a Bible. The Bible is the word of God and we are called to have God's word hidden in our hearts. And moms, this applies to you too. So moms, they hide God's word in their heart and they keep it so that when we have hard times in life, we can go to our moms and they can give us encouraging words right out of the Bible. And that, so I have the Bible, which is moms keeping and memorizing scripture to be ready to encourage, a chocolate bar because they're so dang sweet, and some Kleenexes to wipe their tears. And that's the way that we describe moms. So kids, don't forget to honor your moms today and every day. Give her a high five. Tell her she's awesome. Mom, grandma, whomever. We're just very thankful for all of them. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. My name is Michael, and I'm one of the pastors here on staff. And it's good to be with you today on this Mother's Day. So you might be wondering, what exactly do I have behind me? And this is my Mother's Day gift to my mom. She's always wanted one of these, but until now, I haven't been able to find it or to get it for her. But for those of you that may not know exactly what this is, this is a, a ziziva. It's a South American weevil. But besides being a, a South American weevil, as of 2017, it's also the last word in the Oxford English Dictionary. So that's right, Mom. I'm finally giving you the last word. I know, I'm a good son. But speaking of Mother's Day, one of the stories that I love in, in the Bible uh, comes from, uh, in, in Luke chapter 2. It's about Jesus and his parents. It's when Mary and Joseph forget their son, Jesus, at the temple for a whole day. And then it took them a few more just to find him. So now that they, they would have been traveling with extended family, and it would have been easy to assume that he was with uh, um, a, a cousin or some other relative, some other safe relative. So this isn't an example of bad parenting. But if you are a parent, have you ever had this kind of feeling before? So I lose my car keys and my church keys all the time. Just ask our office administrator. But I haven't lost a kid just yet. There have been moments when we're playing outside or we're somewhere like that and I turn around and I, they're not where I expect them to be. Or maybe they've run back into the house. <clears throat> but I've never experienced the type of emotion that Mary would have felt at this moment when she realized that her son was missing. So they returned to the temple when they, they finally figured out that's where he was and found Jesus there. And you, kind of, you can just feel the relief that would have rushed over her. In verse 47, it says that when they found him, they were astonished. They were greatly astonished. So they, being astonished, uh, this points to them being dumbfounded or at a loss for words. But the Greek, the, the original, or the Koine Greek, the original language of the New Testament, it points to uh, this feeling kind of being like punched or struck or hit. So that they were literally hit then with a loss of words. I wonder what was going on through her head at that moment. So are we allowed to spank Jesus? Is, is that a thing? Uh, um, he's been around since the beginning of time. Does he, uh, what a timeout do? So I've walked in on, on some messes from my kids that have left me struck with a loss for words. And I know I've caused this for my own mom and even for my wife uh, with my kids. And in this story with Mary, you then get to verse 51 where it says, but his mother, mother treasured all these things in her heart. So this is the same thing that she did 12 years before when Jesus was born and the shepherds then came to celebrate his birth. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. So this is, a, this is an overgeneralization, but uh, I believe that moms have this ability more than dads do to treasure up all these things and then to ponder them in their heart. 
So when there's a mess on the floor or writing on the walls or the couch or handprints on the TV or somewhere else where they shouldn't be or, or chewed up food under the cushion or that crusty thing that you found in the back of the car and you have no idea what it is. Moms can see the best in these situations and be the keeper of these memories. One thing that I'm learning from watching my mom and my wife as she raises our kids is that a mother's job is never really done. Some, some are stay-at-home moms and work 24 hours a day. Some work outside the home and then return back to their first job. There are grandmothers who are also now functioning as mothers and grandmothers who work to be a constant support for their children. You can retire, but you don't really ever retire from being a mom. And this is both a blessing and then a, a tall order. We as a church, we are a church full of mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers. So if you're a mother or you have a mother figure in your life, at the end of the day, take a moment to reflect on your family, on your mom, on whomever might have filled that maternal role in your life and treasure all these things in your heart on this Mother's Day. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sherry, Pastor Laura, Pastor Michael, for your words today. Those were all very helpful, meaningful, and encouraging to us. Well, here it is. It's Mother's Day, and let's be honest, we were all hoping we would be further along than this. Here in Michigan, our governor has just extended her executive order to stay home and to stay safe. So uh, it will still be a while before we can meet together in uh, person. Uh, even once those restrictions are lifted, we realize it will be a gradual kind of reopening where people will feel safe to come out and want to worship again. Rest assured, we're going to stay engaged in ministry, not just bringing services uh, like that we're enjoying this morning, but all that we can do to equip you, to help you to continue to grow in your faith, to help you to, uh, to live out your faith in your home, to be able to uh, help people to be discipled uh, as a believer and help people to come to know Jesus as Savior. And we believe many will make that decision during this time. But while we're going through this, we're living through some very difficult circumstances. Uh, many people are out of work. The unemployment numbers are high and will probably continue to grow. Uh, we're staying at home and that presents all kinds of different uh, scenarios, circumstances, and difficulties. The threat of this virus is still very real and we're all asking the question, so when is it all going to be over? And in the midst of the asking the question, we're saying, God, are you going to do anything about this? Well, one of the things I want to encourage you with is this, to rest assured God is at work. Uh, he is, is involved in this in every step of the way. Nothing is escaping him. Nothing is catching God by surprise. And uh, we can continue to come and pray and ask for his help and guidance. He will see us through this. One of the things that I'm encouraged about is that when I just look back on the faithfulness of God, I mean, I can look back in the Bible and see his faithfulness through generations. I can read even in the history of our own nation and see God's faithfulness when we've gone through very, very difficult times as a people, even facing things like a pandemic. And then I look at my own personal life and I am reminded when I see God's faithfulness to be there to meet me in my times of deepest needs, to provide for the needs that I have. So with all of those considerations in mind, God wants to remind each of us, seek me today and to trust me. I was faithful then, I'll be faithful now. I wanted to include a song in today's worship service that I thought would be meaningful for all of us. It's a song that just speaks to this exact thing thing that when we look at the circumstances that we're in and that can be very difficult and we're saying, God, we thought it would be very different by now. And we're asking the question, God, when are you, you going to work? That God speaks back and reminds us, I have been faithful. I will be faithful again. So would you join with me as we sing this song of worship and, and just draw the strength that we receive from it, just knowing the confidence we have in God. The song is called Do It Again. Let's sing and give God our worship now. Walking around these walls 
think after singing that song, I think we should just come to the Lord in prayer. Would you join with me as we pray right now? Father, I thank you for the assurance, not just from that song, though it, it helps us to really have a way of remembering what you've done, to place our confidence in you again, to continue to remind us to let our, our songs of praise you know, come back to you. So you've been faithful in the past. We know you'll be faithful in the future, Lord. Uh, Lord, as we pray today, we're asking that you would just be mindful that through this, we're, we're going through some times of real uncertainty. Many of us are fearful, nervous. Uh, Lord, we don't know when this is going to play out, that when there's going to be a vaccine, if that's going to be the answer that we're looking for and that we need, if it's going to be detection kits that can help us to know if someone has a virus or if they've had it and they're immune. All of those things we're praying for and asking, Lord, from you. We pray you'd be directing those people in the scientific and the medical communities that are working just toward those uh, solutions, those answers. And so, Father, we, we trust that you're going to be a part of, of that process. But, Lord, as we come today, we just say we, we trust you with our life. Every day is full of uncertainties and every day is full of blessings. Um, we thank you that as we can come to you as a God who knows uh, our life now, who knows our future, the God who, who has all of history in your hands, we just have a confidence that you're at work in this. Lord, when we just think back through the history of our own nation, if we go further back and think through the history of the world, there have been times of great calamity. There have been times of, of disease and plagues. There have been times of, of war. There have been times, Lord, where everyone was just uncertain, where uh, financial markets just fell through completely. We've seen all of those things. We've, we've read about them. Some have actually lived through those moments. But Lord, what we learn through that is that you've still been faithful to your people. You've been faithful to all those who've called out to you. Your, your kingdom has advanced. It's often in the midst of these most difficult circumstances that you use these very moments to have people come to saving faith. Lord, if we have to go through this, whether it's to be inconvenienced that we can't meet together, or if it's in the real pain that people will come down with the disease and, and many will even lose their lives with, because of this, but if the, the ultimate reality is that many, many, maybe thousands or millions will come to place their, their trust in you as Savior, that when this life is over, they will live with you throughout eternity, then God, we recognize that you are going to bring about that kind of good through this kind of hardship. We do pray, Lord, for those that are facing real, real uncertainties. I just, my heart goes out to those who have lost work, unemployment checks haven't uh, kicked in, stimulus checks haven't arrived, and they're just saying, Lord, how do I take care of my needs and the needs of my family? We pray that you would provide. We pray that you would lay it on the hearts of, of friends, family members, neighbors, even us as a church, to be able to do all that we can to help to meet real needs that people are facing. We pray, Lord, for those people that are vulnerable and at risk of contracting this virus and their very health could be in jeopardy. We pray, God, that you would put a shield of protection around them, that every safe uh, practice and procedure would be observed and that all the needs that they need would be supplied safely uh, through either people that will be bringing things to their home, online deliveries, whatever the, the avenue, Lord, but that you would direct what is needed to those that are in need while keeping them safe. We pray, Lord, for every person who is in isolation at home, and we think particularly today on Mother's Day, with families being at home together, and while that can be a blessing, Lord, it can just add just so much stress of people being in such close proximity to each other all of the time. And for mothers who so desperately need a place of rest and a time to be able just to be alone and to be refreshed, Lord, sometimes that is just so lacking. So we pray that you would provide even those times and opportunities today. We pray that you would bless the times together that families have in their homes. Bless the meal times, bless the conversations, bless the Lord the things that happen as we really can have time with one another rather than being pulled apart by such very different hurried schedules. And Lord, we trust you for the work of the church. Even though we can't gather together and we can't do programs like children's ministry and youth ministries and meet together in small groups, your work is going uh, forward. Your voice is being heard. People are responding to you. 
Lord, I pray you would bless even a service like we're having today where, where persons would be not only encouraged in their faith, but some listening who don't know you as Savior would say, Jesus, I trust you as my Savior because I realize so much of life is out of my control and I have to come to you that I believe is in control of all things. So Lord, through, through this day and all that we're facing and the future that is, is still ahead of us, we place our full confident trust in you. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us here today. Continue to speak peace into our heart and help us to know you and walk with you in whatever the days, the weeks, the months, the years hold for us ahead. You are a faithful God, and we bless you as we pray confidently in your holy name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Just give me one second. Thank sure. you. Sorry. Uh huh. Hey. Hi. Two minutes. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. Sorry about hey, that. Hey, Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Have you ever done one of these interviews over the camera before? No. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the job to get started with. It's not just um, a job, it's sort of probably the most important job. Uh, the title that we have going right now is Director of Operations, but it's really kind of so much more than that. Responsibilities and requirements are, are really quite extensive. Uh, first category for the requirements would be mobility. This job requires that you must be able to work standing up most or really all of the time, uh, constantly on your feet, constantly bending over, constantly exerting yourself, a high level of stamina. Uh, uh, okay. That's a lot. For how many, like, for how many hours? Uh, 135 hours to unlimited hours a week. It's basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm sure you'll have a chance from time to time to maybe just sit down here and there, yeah? Uh, you mean like a break? Yeah. Uh, no, there are no breaks available. Is, th is that even legal? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so like no lunch? You can or... have lunch, but only when the associate is done eating their lunch. Uh, I think that's a little intense. No. no. Not possible. That's crazy. Now, this position requires excellent negotiation and interpersonal skills. We're really looking for someone that might have a degree in uh, medicine, in finance, and the culinary arts. You must be able to wear several hats. Associate needs constant attention. Sometimes they have to stay up with an associate throughout the night. Being able to work in a chaotic environment, if you, if you had a life, we'd ask you to sort of give that life up. No vacations. In fact, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and holidays, the workload is gonna go up, and we demand that with, with a happy disposition. Uh, that's almost cruel. <laughs> that's almost a, a very, very sick, twisted joke. Worry about when there's time to sleep or... Oh, no time to sleep. Yeah, all-encompassing, all almost. That's exactly right. 365 days a year? Yes. No, that's, that's inhumane. That's, that's very insane. The meaningful connections that you make and the, the feeling that you get from really helping your associate are immeasurable. Also, let's cover the salary. The position is going to pay absolutely nothing. Excuse me? No. Nobody's doing that for free. Yeah, pro bono. <laughs> Completely for free. <laughs> no! What if I told you there's someone that actually currently uh, holds this position right now? Billions of people, actually. Who? Moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moms. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh! <laughs> And they meet every requirement, oh, don't wow. they? Oh my God. Moms are the best. Yeah, there's no pay. They're 24 hours, they're always there. Now I'm thinking about my mom. Yeah, and what are you thinking about her? I'm thinking about all those nights and everything. Thank you so much for everything you do. I know it doesn't seem like I appreciate all of it, but I definitely do. So mom, I wanna say thank you for everything that you've done. I love you very much. You've been there through thick and thin. My mom is just awesome. She's awesome.
Well, again, happy Mother's Day, and uh, I just want to thank you for being with us today, and I want to thank you again for allowing me the privilege of just sharing with you just for a few moments uh, today. Um, thanks, Mom. We are indebted to you. Uh, we love you. Uh, we are grateful to you, and uh, we celebrate you today, and we hope that this can be the best day possible, even given the circumstances that we're in. And listen, I realize that today can be a difficult day for mothers, and not just because of the, the situation that we're in right now with coronavirus and not being able to engage with family. But I recognize that for some people, whether it's just this year in particular or for every year, it's a sad day because your, your mother is no longer with you. Uh, she's died and it's a, it's a painful time. I recognize that there are some women who desperately want to be mothers and that's never happened for you. And so when it comes to Mother's Day, there's a pain that's in your heart. I recognize that there are mothers out there that grieve because you've had children who have died. And uh, this day is another sad reminder that those precious gifts that God gave you now are no longer with you. And there can be all kinds of other painful circumstances. So I, I do recognize that. And I want to say that as a church family, we pray for you. We want today to be an encouragement for you, for you today and asking God to meet you right where you are and to kind of minister to you in the special circumstances you find yourself in. I'm just reminded in, in the Bible where uh, we're told to weep with those who weep, but we're also told to rejoice with those who rejoice. So for those of you who are moms, especially those who have young children, it can be a really special time. I just pray it's a great blessing for all of you. Um, my privilege over the, the last two days, I've got to experience something very interesting, and it leads into the message I'm going to share. Um, as a pastor in our Southern Michigan Conference at the Free Methodist Church, I get to be a part of a group of people that gets to uh, be a uh, part of interviewing persons who feel a call to ministry and helping them to kind of understand that call and where God is leading in their life. And particularly to go through this process where they've not only discerned a call to ministry, but now being uh, fully equipped to be engaged, to be a, a minister, a pastor in the Free Methodist Church. And over the last two days, uh, we've been uh, doing a lot of Zoom interviews and hearing reports and testimonies of persons who are being called into ministry to serve right here in Southern Michigan with the Free Methodist Church. And one of the things that I've noticed in, uh, in the number of stories and testimonies that we've heard from people, when we've asked them, hey, just tell us a little bit again, your faith journey, what, what began uh, this, this process of you sensing that God was saying, I want you to serve me full time in ministry and, and to bring you to this point of where we are today. And over and over and over again, we've heard in those stories, uh, persons who would share about uh, being raised in a Christian home and particularly the influence of parents, sometimes the mom, sometimes dad, uh, grandparents. Uh, and so we, we've been hearing that over and over again. When I think back in my own story, and then when I think about with my mom, I love my mom. Hi, mom. I, I think that you're, you're watching this service. Uh, I, you know, I just was raised in a Christian home. When I was a, a child, my mom encouraged me in my faith. She was made sure that I was involved in children's programs at our church and in youth ministry. Uh, as I matured, I got to observe how she lived out her faith. My mom experienced some real tragedy and loss in her life. She overcame cancer. She lived some real victory there. Uh, as, as I saw her live out her own faith, even as, uh, as I continued to mature, she went on more missions trips than any person that I know. She served God in, in countries all over the world, uh, ministering to churches and children and orphanages, uh, loving them, but you know, just so far away. And all of those had an impact on me and they helped to shape me to become the man that I am and even the pastor that I am today. So I, I live out that testimony, just like I was hearing from so many people over these last two days. And for most of us, we can see the impacts uh, of our mom on our spiritual development. And that's another reason to, to thank uh, her this morning if you're able to do that. So this morning, the message I wanna share with you really is talking about four people, two men and two women. Now of these four people, we know a lot about one man. We know a fair amount about the second man. But of the two women, we really don't know much about them. But what we'll see is the impact of their lives on, on these other men, and one of them uh, is a child, one's a grandson, and the impact that that made on the whole kingdom of God all around the world and really throughout all history. Now, the two men are these, the Apostle Paul and Timothy, and the two women 
are Timothy's mom and Timothy's grandmother. Now, here's the backdrop on this story. Uh, We've been sharing over the last few weeks from uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And the reason why we took that letter was that we said during this time while we are, you know, kind of quarantined and at home, uh, we were looking at letters that Paul wrote while he was in prison. Uh, And so the book of Ephesians has been uh, an encouraging time to look at how Paul was making the most of every opportunity, even when he was in prison. Well, Paul was in prison more than once. And now we're looking at a letter, a part of a letter that he wrote when he was in prison. This was his second imprisonment. And he wrote to his protege in the faith, Timothy. Paul wrote two letters to him that we have in our New Testament. We call the first one, 1 Timothy. We call the second, 2 Timothy. The context where Paul wrote this second letter is very different than when he was writing the book of Ephesians. Paul is in prison in Rome. Now he is an an aged apostle. And here's the thing, his execution is imminent. Paul realizes that his life will be over very soon. And so as he wrote to Timothy, this, this young man that we're going to see that he loved, that he helped to bring to faith and to nurture in the faith, Paul is really kind of writing almost like his last will and testament to Timothy. He's in a dungeon. The only light that he has is from a little hole that's up in in the ceiling. It's dark. It stinks. He doesn't have people visiting him the way that he's had in the past. His career as a gospel worker is virtually over. He's been doing this for 30 plus years. He's planted churches. He's defended the truth. He's consolidated the work. In fact, when Paul was writing a little bit uh, at at this time in his life, he said that famous uh, word that I fought the good fight. I finished the the race, I've kept the faith. And then he says, and now I'm ready to receive that crown that God has in store for me. But as he writes to Timothy and why this is important for us with Mother's Day, there's a question that's on his mind. Who's going to carry on the faith? Who's going to carry on the work? Who's going to battle for this truth that I have defended and fought for for all of these years? And so he writes to Timothy. Now, he led Timothy, Timothy to faith in Jesus probably when Timothy was a, a young man, maybe in his uh, teenage years, you know. Uh, he discipled him. He loved him. Paul calls him things tenderly, that, like the, my child of the faith. And, and, he, and he speaks compassionately because he's had this close relationship with him through the years. And so as Paul writes this second letter of Timothy, he begins sharing these very personal words. I want to read to you the first five verses of 2 Timothy chapter 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I've been sent out to tell others about the life he has promised through faith in Christ Jesus. And I'm writing to Timothy, my dear son. May God, the Father of Christ Jesus, our Lord, give you grace, mercy, and peace. Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted, and I will be filled with joy when we are together again. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. In essence, Paul said, Timothy, I know your grandmother. I know her faith is real. And I know your mom. And I know her faith is just as real. And Timothy, I've been watching you all of this time. And I'm convinced your faith is very real too. Now, Timothy is probably about 35 years old now. And so for all of these years, Paul has been working with him and discipling him in the faith. He's set under his teaching. He's watched him in action. And now Timothy He is a Christian minister. He's a missionary. He's a leader of the church. God had been at work in his life, making him to become all of these things. And as we look at his life, we see there are these major influences that God used to shape him to become the man that he is. And the number one first influence that we see is his upbringing. Paul specifically mentions his grandmother and his mother. Each of us, we're a product of our own inheritance. The most formative influences that any of us have ever known have been our parents and how we were raised in our home. 
Uh, good biographies never begin with the subject of the person they're writing about. Good biographies always begin with parents and probably grandparents as well. And while it's true that we can't inherit our parents' faith, we can be led to faith by watching their teaching, their example, and being uh, the, the recipient of their prayers. Timothy came from a godly home. Interesting, he was the son of a mixed marriage. We learn in scripture that his father was Greek and probably an unbeliever. And his mother was raised in the Jewish faith and then later on became a, a follower of Jesus. She became a Christian. Uh, when we look and we see with his grandmother, grandmother is probably much the same, raised in the Jewish faith and then gave her heart to become a follower of Jesus. So even before his mother and grandmother became Christians, they were reading the Old Testament scriptures, studying about God. Uh, Paul even writes to Timothy, it's in verse 315, he says, from childhood, you've been acquainted with the sacred writings. So even as he was growing up from a, as, a, as a child, they were teaching him Old Testament truths. And so what we see is the impact of his mother's faith and his grandmother's faith on his life. And today, anyone who's been raised in a Christian home has received a blessing from God that you can't even begin to calculate the, the impact, the influence, and what that is going to mean in your life now and then throughout all of your life. So what I want to do is to take just a few moments to examine the faith of these two women. Now, Paul refers to Timothy's faith as genuine. Um, other translations refer to that word, although they'll use the word sincere. It comes from a Greek word, anupokritos. It just means it's not phony, that there are no hidden agendas. It's without hypocrisies. Now, Paul's, I mean, Timothy's mom and grandma, they weren't perfect. I mean, they were just ordinary women. They experienced family life just like we all experience. So there would have been times where Timothy had tension with mom, and there would have been times where, where mom had tension with grandma. I mean, it's just they just live life together. They're just ordinary people. But here's the thing. Their faith was very real. God was real in their lives. And that's what they passed on to Timothy. So I want to talk to the moms who are watching today. And, and just ask you a couple of questions as we kind of look into see the impact that we're having on people in our life, particularly our family members, particularly our kids. Moms, here's a, I'll ask you three questions. First, do you believe in God? Just a straightforward question. Do you believe in God? Second question, do you trust Jesus as your Savior? Do you believe that you are a sinful person and that you believe that Jesus' death on the cross was to forgive your sins? and that that is the hope of your salvation. And then the third question, do you think that God is a real part of everyday life? Well, that's faith. Now, here's what I want you to do. As you consider your own faith, three questions. Would you call it genuine? I mean, it's just a, a real question. We, we, we know that we have faith, we believe these things, and that's kind of the mental side of it, but would we say that our faith is genuine? Would, would you say that your faith is not phony? Would you say that your faith is without hypocrisy? Or just to put it simply, uh, what would it look like uh, for me to live out a genuine faith in, in my home, in front of, of my family? All right. Now, I started with moms because it's Mother's Day, but obviously the question goes to every one of us. Uh, dad's listening, kids that are listening, whoever is listening, do you have faith in God? It's a basic question. Is your faith genuine? And, and then how do you live that out in everyday life? Our genuine faith, and this is the, the crux of this message, this is the genu the, what we get from where Paul was writing to Timothy. Our genuine faith has a profound impact on the people in our lives, particularly our children. I mean, each of us has to make our own decisions. So we realize that we can live a faith, model faith, do all that we can, and our children have to make their own decisions. And the reality is some will walk away from faith, but others won't. But our faithful witness, please get this, our faithful witness will never be lost. I've seen God call people from all kinds of backgrounds into full-time service. And so much of this did begin because their parents lived out an authentic faith in their life. But listen, I've seen wayward kids 
uh, that their parents were faithful to them, lived out the Christian life in front of them, but they walked away from God. And then I've seen God use the reminder of that testimony, that faithful witness of their parents and their grandparents, to use that later on in life to call them back into faith. I've even seen people that God has called into faith whose parents or grandparents, nobody lived out an authentic faith in, in their life. We've seen God work in those circumstances. But the point is this. When we live out a genuine faith in our homes and in the lives of people around us, that witness is never wasted. It is never lost. I, I want to encourage people who are working in ministry, those of you who work in children's ministry, your witness is never lost. Those of you who work with youth ministry, your witness is never lost, regardless of the circumstances that people are find in their own home. Now, I have to say, I've seen a different side of this, too. I've referenced it briefly, but let me just say this. I've seen children walk away from faith because of their parents. I've, I've seen children that said that my parents professed a faith in God, but it, it was not genuine. I mean, they would probably be the first ones that would say, you know, my parents' faith was phony. It was, they were hypocrites. That There, there was no life change. There was no evidence that God was real in, in life. So if it wasn't real to them, why should it be real to me? So both of these things, I mean, these, this can be tragic for us. Here's the word. It doesn't have to stay that, that way. Wherever we are, whether we, we have a, a faith, a real faith in God, but we haven't been living it as we should, or maybe we've never had faith in God, but God is calling us to faith. We can make those kind of substantial changes now that will be for, for the good of our own life and then certainly make an impact in the lives of, of our children and people around us. Let me go back to the beginning. I mentioned this, this part of this process that I am on in our conference with pastors of people that God is calling into ministry and hearing some of these reports that I've just really had the privilege of listening to over the last couple of days in particular. When, people, when, when God calls people into full-time ministry, he calls them from all kinds of different backgrounds. He calls women into ministry and men into ministry. One of the things that was very, uh, very noticeable in the last two days of these interviews I've been a part of, one was the person that was leading our, our time and, and uh, this process was our bishop, Linda Adams. She's the first woman bishop that was elected in our denomination. Linda's a good friend of mine. And so here she is as Bishop Linda leading this. And for the majority of people that we were interviewing that God was calling into ministry, this time, the majority were women. It was very interesting and very encouraging to see that. The other thing that was encouraging was to see that the people that God was calling into ministry came from all kinds of different backgrounds and demographics. There were people that were basically kind of in their 20s that were young and in ministry and that, uh, you know, they, they came to know Christ probably uh, in their ch as a child and then developed in their teenage years, and particularly when they get into those early 20s, making that earnest decision to give their life fully to Christ. But there were just as many people that were coming, feeling called into full-time ministry in their retirement years. We have two people that we were interviewing that had finished their careers, one a corporate person that had retired from Ford uh, as, as an engineer and now being called into full-time ministry. So God calls from different backgrounds, men and women. It's just encouraging to see the way that God calls people. And when God placed this call on their, their life, that basically what they were saying was, I, I know that God is calling me to serve him. I'm picking up this torch and I'm going to continue on in the mission. So with that in mind, just thinking here for a moment, I want to say this word to parents, particularly of young children, all right? God is going to call some of your children into full-time ministry. Some of you parents that are listening today, some of you moms listening today, particularly some of you moms here in our own church family, you've got your precious little children beside you, boys and girls. And as you look at their eyes right now, I want you to know God is going to call some of them to, full, to serve him full-time in the sense of pastoral work. And I'm, there's different ways to serve full-time I'm going to speak to in just a moment. When I, when I think about our pastoral team, Pastor, Pastor Michael, Pastor Laura, that God placed a call in their life to say, I want you to serve me. They're being faithful to, to serve him now. When I think of uh, another person that grew up in our church, uh, Jacob Tenney. Jacob will be just graduating in just about a week or so from Asbury Seminary with his Master's of Divinity degree, called into full-time service, raised up, nurtured in our church. I'm just so proud of Jacob. Uh, one of the persons that we interviewed here just uh, this Saturday when I'm recording this, so it had been yesterday as you're watching this, Tom Jacobs. Tom Jacobs was a part of a, our staff here. We brought him on as a youth pastor. We've seen Tom grow, be nurtured in the faith, and now God will be... Uh, uh, or Tom will be ordained as an elder in our church this year. And then another person that's been a whole part of this process 
that uh, I've been dialoguing with over the, the last few weeks is Josh Angel. Again, many of you know Josh. Josh and Nikki served in our staff here. We brought Josh on just as a youth pastor and to see now Josh serving as an elder in the church. So God will call some of your children just in that same way. But listen, God will equally call some of your children to serve him in the marketplace in a full-time way. Uh, God needs his witness in corporate America. He needs his witness in classrooms. He needs his witness in factories. He needs his witness for people who are essential workers. So God calls us to full-time ministry in different avenues. Some, it's in pastoral work, similar to what I'm doing. But others, he calls to pastoral work just or, or missions work the same way that he's using you. It, it's, it is all full-time ministry, uh, regardless of where we are serving him. Some of, of your children will be leaders in the local church. Some of them are going to work in children's ministry, youth ministry. Some will be small group leaders. Some will serve on the worship team. Some will be working on our administrative committee to oversee a property in the church. God needs workers in every avenue of life. Persons, and here's the thing, persons of genuine faith, persons who will respond to his call. And each one of us can have an impact on our children, on these people, as parents, as grandparents, as pastors, as children's workers, youth ministry workers. This, the point of today's message is this. How we live our life makes a difference. It certainly makes a difference to us, but it can make a difference in the lives of people that God has placed in our life, particularly our children, particularly our families. And in order for us to have a positive impact, our faith has to be genuine. It has to be rooted in Jesus. It has to be nourished in God's word, the Bible. It has to be deepened through prayer and it has to be lived out in a dependence on the power of the Holy Spirit. What are some of the marks of a genuine faith? Well, they are this, confession. A genuine faith says, you know, Lord, I'm going to be looking at my life. I'm going to say, you know, Lord, search my heart, Lord. See if there's any, any wicked way, any hurtful way, anything in me that's just pleasing to you. And then when, when God reveals us, we say, God, I truly confess of that. I deal with sin. A genuine faith is going to be marked by a cleansed life. You know, God, I want to come and, and have you not only forgive my sin, but I want you to, to remove this. I want you to help me to not continue doing those things that are offensive to you. A genuine faith is to be marked by repentance. God, when you reveal those things, when you work in my heart, I'm going to turn away and go a new direction. And a genuine faith is going to be marked by a person who is earnest in living a holy life. A genuine faith always seeks God, desires to know him more, submits to his will. A genuine faith will be marked by a changed life. God will change our character. God will change our sin habits. God will change our thoughts, our attitudes, and we'll live in obedience to him. I think God let us have this Mother's Day in this, this odd circumstance just so each one of us could think about our faith and the impact that we can have on the people that we love most. And here's what I want to encourage you with. It's never too late to have a positive impact. It's never too late for you to come to faith. It's never too late to ask God to work in your life. It's never too late to have a genuine faith that will be lived out to make a difference in the lives of the people that you love. So what I would like to do is just to lead us in a time of prayer. I mean, our scripture content today basically was five verses where, where the Apostle Paul was looking at Timothy and just saying, you're my son in the faith, I love you. And I, as I look at your real faith, I remember your mom and your grandma. That's what it is. And then, but Paul was able to look and see the influence of, of that faith lived out in Timothy's life that shaped him to become the man that Paul was saying, Timothy, I want you to pick up the torch and carry on the work. So I would like to lead us in a time of prayer. And I'm going to pray first of all for moms. It's Mother's Day. And then I'm going to pray for all of us who are saying, God, I, I genuinely want to live in earnest faith. And then finally, I'm going to pray for those that God has brought here. Do not end this watching this broadcast for those that God brought here because he said today is the day of salvation for you. So let me pray for those right now. Father, first of all, I pray for mothers today. Grandmothers are, are watching that are saying, I want to have a genuine faith that really makes a difference in the lives of my family. I, I, I want to live a, a, an authentic faith, Lord. I, I, I want to be in a close relationship with you. I want you to change my life. I want you to fill me with your power. I mean, I'm just an ordinary person. That's the way I feel about myself. But Lord, I, I want you to make a difference in me so that my faith is witnessed 
It makes a difference in the lives of my family, lives of my children. And so, Lord, for every mother, grandmother, every woman that may be listening today, specifically on this day, we just pray, hear their prayers, Lord, and work powerfully in their life. Let today be a new beginning for, for many, that they would say, God, I have walked a certain way, but now I am coming with a, with a really broken heart to say, work in me to let me be the person I so desire to be, to be a positive witness for my family. Lord, I pray that you would honor their faith. I pray that their faith would be observed. I pray that the way that they pray for their family, the way they serve their family, the way that they try to live out their faith in their home would make a difference in the lives of their family, particularly their children. Then, Lord, I pray for all of us who are coming, men, women, whoever is gathering today, regardless if we are parents or if we're children ourselves, I pray for all of us who are saying, God, I just want to have a genuine faith. I, I, I want my life to count for you. I pray that you would work in me to help me to overcome some of these sin habits that I have. I pray that you would help me to honor you in the things that I do in my, in my home, in my, my workplace, uh, wherever I find myself or in the people that you placed in my life. I pray that I would be the, the kind of person that my life would be a positive influence for others. That when they look at me, they see something that's genuine in my faith in Jesus. So God, help that to be real in me and work whatever changes you need to make in me today. And then finally, God, I pray for those that you brought here today because this is their day of salvation. Lord, whatever their background, whatever their circumstance, you brought them here today. You're speaking to their hearts directly to say, place your trust in me. You, you brought them here today to say, your sins can be forgiven. You brought them here today to say, I am real. I am at work now and I will be at work in your future. Lord, you brought them here today that they would say, Jesus, save me. Lord, I thank you for those moments, those prayers that are being lifted at, at this very moment and for the reality of salvation. Lord, encourage them in this. Encourage all of us as we seek you, we pray. Amen. Now, all of those prayers I know you were praying were earnest. And here's what I would like you to do. With our digital connection card, I would like you, you're going to see this over on the left side in the comments section. Click that. You can let us know the decision you're making. If you're a first-time guest with us, as Sherry mentioned, let us know. We'll make a donation in your name. You can let us know that. But more importantly, if you're making that decision to say, I'm trusting Jesus as your as Savior, we want to know. We want to help you to grow in your faith. Whatever we can do to assist you in that, we will do. Share your prayer requests with us. Share your struggles with us. We'll keep those confidential. But God brought us all here today to say, let's live a genuine, earnest faith. And it can start today with humbling ourselves before the Lord. So let us know how we can serve you. Now, we're going to close out our service a little different than what we've done over the last few weeks. We're going to close it with a song. And there's a reason I wanted to put this song here. It's a very familiar hymn in the church, Great is Thy Faithfulness. We wanted to be reminded not only of God's faithfulness to see us through this time, but faithfulness that God would hear the very prayers we've just brought to him. That, that we can trust God that he's going to help to answer these prayers and to work in our lives deeply, to answer the prayers we've made for salvation. So as we sing this final hymn, please don't just check out of the service yet. I would love for you to go all the way through this, this hymn and make it just a declaration again. Lord, I trust you and I thank you that you are at work in my life now. And I thank you that you'll be at work in my life and in my family's life in the future. So I want to say goodbye to you now. We're going to sing this song and then we'll be done with our service. Thank you so much for being a part of today. Let's sing this very special hymn of our faith. Praise the